In this lesson, we are going to talk about the wave particle duality of particles. The main parts of this lesson are the Bohr's theory limitations. Also, we'll talk about the wave particle duality of the electron, and we'll finish by talking about the standing wave. As learning objectives, at the end of this lesson, will be able to understand the wave behavior of small particles. To begin, let's talk about the Bohr's theory limitations. In this model, we have seen that the Bohr's theory could explain well the line spectra from hydrogen atoms. However, many questions arise from this model. The first one, why is the electron restricted to orbit around the nucleus at only a fixed distance. Also, why the energies in the hydrogen atom are quantized? And the third one, this model could explain only the line spectra of the hydrogen and hydrogen-like ions. But with atoms different from hydrogen, such as helium and neon, with a greater number of electrons, their line spectra could not be predicted. Therefore, the idea of the matter had to be revised in order to answer to these questions. And in 1924, a French physicist could provide a solution to this puzzle. So in his hypothesis, De Broglie said that if light has properties typical of particles, as we have seen with the photoelectric effect from Einstein theory, then he said maybe particles such as electrons could also exhibit properties of waves. And this wave has this wavelength, which is equal to h divided by m times v. Here the h is the Planck's constant, which has a value of 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule second. Here we have the mass of the moving particle, electron in this case, and here we have its velocity. And shortly after, two American physicists, Germer and Davison, they could confirm this hypothesis. In the experiment, where a beam of electrons were sent through these double slits, they noticed that this electron could produce interference pattern, which is the same as the one observed when X-rays were used. And which was remarkable from this experiment is that this measured wavelength of the wave of the electron was exactly the same as the wavelength predicted from this equation. Also in a second experiment, where a sample is eliminated by an X-ray, we get this diffraction pattern. And if we replace the X-rays by the electrons, a beam of electrons, we get this pattern, which is very similar to the pattern of the obtained from the X-rays. Here again, we confirm the wave properties of the electron. Let's do this example. Here we have two objects, an electron and a tennis ball. Both they are traveling at different speeds. So we are asked to determine the wavelength of each object. So we have two objects, for example one. We start by the electron. The electron it has a mass of 9.1 times 10 to the 31, negative 31 kilograms. And the wavelength that is that corresponds to the wave associated with this particle using this equation is equal to 5.82 times 10 to the negative 11 meters. It is a short wavelength, but it can be measured as it belongs to the X-ray region. And it is similar to the spacing between atoms in many crystals. And now let's calculate the wavelength of the wave associated with the tennis ball, which has a larger mass. 
which is equal to 5.50 times 10 to the negative 2 kilograms. Here, the wavelength using this equation, we get a wavelength equals 2.68 times 10 to the negative 34 meters. Here we can see that it is an extremely short wavelength and no device could measure this type of wavelength. Therefore, we can say that the De Broglie equation can be applied to different moving objects, for example, tennis ball, neutron, photon, electron, etc. However, with objects that have larger mass, they are better regarded as particles, not like a wave. But with objects that have intermediate masses, like electrons, here we can say that this type of particle, they can exhibit a wave-particle duality. De Broglie also studied why only certain orbits in the Bohr's model are allowed for the electron in the hydrogen atom. And in his hypothesis, he proposed that the electron behaves like a standing wave. A standing wave results from the motion of a string that is fastened at both ends. We have this string of length L that we can see here. And if this string is plugged, so it will vibrate at a fixed frequency of wavelength that is equal to 2L. And this corresponds to the lowest high energy vibration or the first harmonic of the string vibration. And if the string is plugged more strongly, higher energy vibration will be generated, and therefore more knots will be observed in this string. The knots are this point that we can see here. A node is a point where the amplitude of the wave is equal to zero. And the stronger is the blocking and the higher is the energy of vibration the more knots that will be generated and the shorter the wavelengths are obtained and the relationship between the wavelength and the length of string is as follow we can see here that as we have a stronger blocking or a higher energy vibration of the string so we have more knots and this n must be a positive integer that is equal to at least 1, 2, 3, and so forth. So in order for the wave to exist, this value must be a positive integer. And to fit this hypothesis to the Bohr's model, De Bruyne also proposed that in the Bohr's model, the radius of the electron of this circumference it must fit the wavelength of the wave associated with the electron but times n and as we have said it is a positive integer in order to the wave to exist here we can see that we have a standing wave that fits the circumference of the orbit in the Bohr's model with n equals to 4 so we have here four loops that we have here we have for example two loops three and here we have four and in the case where the n is not a positive integer therefore we'll notice here a node in the circumference which means that the wave is cancelled and the electron cannot exist so it is the condition for the electron to orbit around the nucleus as a standing wave and here we can see that the r value is equal to n times the wavelength time over 2p. So we can see that r cannot have any value. Therefore, r must be quantized. And because the energy of the electron in the hydro hydrogen atom depends on the value of r or on the size of the atom, 
Therefore, the energy also must be quantized. Now let's summarize. We have seen that the electron in the Bohr's model could also be described as a standing wave. And the value of R cannot have an arbitrary value, but it must be quantized. And the same thing for the energy of the electron, which depends on the value of R. Therefore, the energy is quantized. The value of n must be integer. If we have a value of n that is equal to 1.4, for example, here in this case, the wave will be cancelled and the electron cannot exist. Also, as in the Bohr's model, in De Broglie hypothesis, the electron in a given orbit is always at the same distance. So here, the nucleus and the electron, they are at the fixed, there is a fixed distance between them, as in Bohr's model. Therefore, the conclusion made by Bohr in the description of the hydrogen atom is also found in the De Broglie hypothesis, where the electron behaves like a standing circular wave.